Man, let's start the show. Where's Rick? Ricky! Rick! Oh, that's right. Last episode. Previously on Anime Talks. Excited for this one. It's uh, over! Whoa! What are you doing there, buddy? Nothing, man. Go ahead and Come just. On, let uh, me see. No, we're good. Go ahead, oh, just uh, go ahead. Count me in. Count me in. Uh, anime fans, rejoice! As I guess I'll just have to do the count in myself. Anime talks in wait three. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Trunks? No, no, no. I'm drunks. Oh? I'm drunks. I'm trunks is drunk uncle drunks. Oh, I don't think I've <laughs> never, never, uh, never heard of him, man. Well, I'm a big fan of you. Oh, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. I watched the show. Oh, yeah, anime talks. I saw what happened. Yeah, it's... I know your best friend is dead. Yeah, it's, it's a little... Uh, a little crazy out here, you know. We just, just what if I told to you together. that I could bring him back, dude? That would be phenomenal because it's like I'm over here doing everything right now, and it's getting a little out of hand. Oh, this I really needs some with these seven Dragon Balls. Yes, I summon my boy Shenron. Yes, dude, I really need him back. But I need somebody I bring him back. lights and all that good stuff. But hold on, wait, 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 wait. He's not gonna come back as some like weird zombie or like Shinigami thing and be all hideous and whatnot, is he? I don't know. I've never done this before. Okay, so we're just we're just rolling the dice. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Uh, Ricky. Ricky what? Uh, you know what? I, I don't know. We never we never really got that far. Is Ricky short for anything? Uh, I think uh, maybe it could be like Ricardo or something. I'm not. Do you know sure. anything about this guy? Uh, he does the lights and the cameras, and he kind of just makes that everything. dead guy right there. Yeah, it's the guy over here. All right. Almighty Shenron. I, I summon thee. And I'd like to use my wish to bring back Ricky something. Yes. That guy over yeah. there. Okay, all right. Oh, no! Dude, it don't oh. work, dude. <laughs> hey, you're back, man. Oh, where am I? Who's that? You ever heard of the legendary drunks? Wait, why'd you kill me? What? Dude, no, man. I don't think that was me, dude. You were the only one here. You uh, did it. I don't know anything about that, man. Things are getting all over the place these days. All I know is we've got Shannon this episode. She's waiting. We need to get this episode started. Oh, hold on, hold on. I want to do the counting. Oh, nah. dude, I gave you a favor. I revived the whole thing. him. It's like a three and it's a two. It's no, no, no. I got it, guys. 30, 29, 28. It's just a three and a two. Tell him, Ricky. It's just one, it's two, no, three. No, 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 the other no, no, way. No, no. It's three. It's three. three. The anime two, talks in three. You got to get the announcer voice. Three, two, yeah. one. You got Together? Yeah, yeah, you guys coordinate. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Three, three two, two, one. one. Anime fans, rejoice as we're here to bring you some of the best one-on-one -on -one conversations with the all-star creatives that help make anime exactly what it is. My name is Shazzy and I am your host. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Anime Talks. Anime Talks! Yo, 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 Anime Talks, Anime Talks, Anime Talks, Anime Talks. Guest, this episode has an amazing quality to perfectly embody every role she has ever tackled. With a voice that was meant for acting both dialogue and entering the fact that she is also an opera singer. From Voltron Force to about 10 years each of work on My Little Pony and Superbook, she stays in business. From the recent Sonic Prime voicing variations of Amy Rose, greatly done, to one of the most intriguing animes of all time, I said it, and that is perfectly portraying Misa Amane in Death Note. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the ever phenomenal Shannon Chan Kent. Yes! <laughs> How are you doing, Shannon? I'm great. What an intro! Could you come? Thank you. Everywhere. <laughs> you let me know. We'll work out. We'll work it out. <laughs> we're so uh, we're so happy to have you here, and so happy to chat with you. And I'm sure everybody tuning in is is happy to get some some good old information from you about yourself and about some of the projects that you've been a part of. And and so I just I won't waste any time. Let's just get right into it. I mean, I know I know that you you kind of started voice acting at at a, at 
a decently young age. And one of your first roles was in 1999, I believe, with Magical Doremi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the misadventures of three little girls studying to be witches. And from there on out, it seems like it just kept going and going. A role in Digimon, Pokemon, Powerpuff Girls, skipping forward to projects like Death Note, Sonic Prime, and so many more. Uh, But can we take a moment to get to know Shannon a little bit and like just how did you get your start in voice acting and the acting realm in general? I mean, the acting, I got bit by the acting bug very young. It runs in my family. My whole mother's side are very artistic. And so, um, but I, I have been singing and acting from a very young age. And uh, when I was doing a musical theater production, mm-hmm. I got scouted at around 13 ish, I think around there, 13, 14. And I got scouted by an agent. I signed with them. Um, and my first two voice auditions, I ended up booking and that's kind of how I know it sounds. So (laughs) it's like, because now I get asked these questions of how do I get into the industry? And I'm like, ah, (laughs) (laughs) I bet, I bet, you know, it's not like that anymore. Like, you know, I'm not Booking yeah. every job I'm auditioning for, but <laughs> I, you know, I was very, very lucky to to have gotten in when I did, and right. to have had my break when I did. I gotta ask then, being being that you did get them at like such a such a young age, you kind of started things early on in the sense of you know simply being in the booth, the ins and outs of recording dialogue, learned early on, script readings or table readings, even the the business aspect of Hollywood, so to speak. Did did learning any of those ins and outs at an early age have any helpful impact for you later on life? Yeah. I mean, first of all, you're working with adults a lot of the time as well. And so my, my, I matured, I think a little bit earlier, um, in a good way, just, I learned how to be around adults and communicate and work with them. Um, and work ethic, you know, you can't, really goof around when you have a short window and time is money. And, you know, there are moments where there's like lots of laughter in the studio. Um, Yeah. Just kind of my work ethic was pretty strong from a young age, but because I started working professionally at a young age, that's just kind of, it's, I guess. I think it's just evolved even more. Yeah. I feel like you, you definitely a hard, do you feel like you were a hard worker when you were, when you were younger? Like, yes. was it, was yes. it in you or were you like oh. tired all the time? Didn't want to do things. No. I feel like you were passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I knew what I wanted to do when I was four, five, six, right. like it was like singing, That's performing awesome. is my passion. And so, and so I, I, I was very lucky to have a very like, um, clear idea of where yeah. I wanted to go. And yeah. so the, the work ethic just came. I mean, obviously I was a kid, Yeah, you know. but you found it, you found it fun as a kid too. And that's always and, cool to like, yes, yes. I love yeah. every single moment. That's awesome. I, I relate to that. I, I love all the things like entertainment and like, I'm, I'm a singer myself as well. So we have like a lot of those things in common, but I mean, you got like a, what do you got a bachelor, a bachelor's in it? You, you, I have a master, a, a master's. Is that what it is? Master. Yeah. yeah, congratulations. Can we give a round of applause, Ricky? Help me <laughs> out here. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. I love it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you started at a young age and you, you got into everything that you got into because... Uh, it may, as, as a fan of, of your work in general and as a fan of, of anime as well, one, one of the roles that you're most famous for in the anime community, at least, is the lovely, the giddy, the obsessive, the hyperactive, the sometimes <laughs> childlike, the eventually oh. second Kira even, and that's Misa Amane in Death Note. And uh, it's been about 16, 17 years since we all first feasted our eyes on, on Death Note as a whole. And I do also feel feel like it's been having a resurgence in conversation again lately, especially with you guys, the cast and everything doing uh, panels together more often. Uh, It's probably a contribution of people talking about it more, such as seeing how you'll be at this year's Anime Las Vegas this April 22nd and 23rd. I can't wait to see you there. Uh, But how did how did you getting the role of of Misa come about? You know, my agent sent me this audition. I had done some anime before that, but this was my first like lead role like big role and I remember going to the audition I remember reading the sides um we call them sides and 
and audition sides. And I was like, oh, it's like, this is a very interesting young lady. Mm-hmm. And I didn't watch a lot of anime when I was younger. Um, Sailor Moon, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Classic. Classic. But, um, so yeah, when I went to the audition and, and you know, sometimes you don't really think about it. You just go in, you read the sides, you try to get into the world, you play in the world and then you leave and you go about your day. Yeah. And I remember getting the call that I had booked it and I was so excited because I was like, Oh my gosh, I've never played a lead before. And I just, Misa's playfulness and like childlike qualities, like Mm -hmm. really spoke to me. Um, so of course, when I found out I got the role, I was ecstatic. That's awesome. I yeah. love it. And you did such a phenomenal job. I mean, how, how much were you aware of, like, as if from what you can remember, like, as far as the character development for Misa, like ahead of time, such as before you took the role, the early days of the role, even, were you aware before the dubbing that there'd be like this twist that would eventually reveal that she was the second Kira? Or was this a moment, like in the moment you found out? It was an in the moment. I mean, We would get the scripts beforehand, but only maybe the day before we record. That's that's so interesting. I mean, what was that like realizing like this is where this character is going to now go? Well, I mean, you get attached. You Mm -hmm. get attached to the characters. And I think because I wasn't um, well versed in the original Death Note or the manga that I was like, that I was like, what? When I was looking at the scripts, I was like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Yes. I have to do this tomorrow? So, yeah, yeah, yes, I was, it was great. I was finding out Right. I, I remember I remember the moment when I was first watching it and, and when I realized that she was the second cuter. I think it, I believe if I'm if I'm correct, somebody out there will correct me. That's for sure if I'm wrong. But I think uh, it was the moment when she came up to the door uh, when she was trying to, to, to uh, get in touch with light. Light opened up the door. She brought her death note to Light. Yeah. Light touched it. And then he saw Rem, her Shinigami. And he was like, she's the second kid. Uh. And I remember being in that moment too. Like, we're all finding out. He's finding out. Like, it's just such a such a well-written story. But the, yeah. the, the voicing itself for Misa, like, I think that you perfectly fit the role. I believe that you, you set the tone for the character and portrayed like the mini acts of Misa in a way that, I feel like it really got it across to the audience of who she truly is. I feel like you you had a really good part in making that uh, become aware to us as the audience. When finding this voice inflection and the way that you were going to portray the character, did you take any inspiration from the original voice actri- actress? I believe uh, Aya, Aya Hirano, I believe. Or did production have any guidelines for you? I mean, what was that process like, if you can remember? Well, there was... There was a little inspiration from um, the original actress in that her voice is also very high. We have right. kind of the same timbre, same tone, are similar. So that was kind of hard to stay away from. But I felt like I just kind of made her my own. Of course, Carl, our director, would guide me. But but I just did what I did in the audition. and And for me having her moments where she was like sitting up higher in her voice, like when she was flirting her moments, you know, and then like, <laughs> ah, and then like when she would get yes. really jealous and mad and, yell and <laughs> you know, and like get whiny. It, for me, that whine, that natural nasality comes, it, it's not hard for me to make. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. So, it's right. It's right in your range. <laughs> uh, it, it, it felt like a really natural fit for me. I don't feel like uh, her voice was too put on. I felt like. Right, right. And that's, that's exactly what I mean too. Natural is the perfect word to describe it. It's, it is, you were a very natural fit. And I think it resonated with the audience because I do believe that Misa is a very a beloved character, whatever it is that you may think about her. Cause some people, you know, love her more than others. Some find her, find her annoying, you know, and this is a little bit annoying. So, but I think it, no matter where it is that you lie, it, it brings it all together. And something that I see get mentioned here and there in the death note community as well, well is pretty much kind of what I said is that Misa's character is written so well the, the the tragedy of losing her parents the the superstardom that she has being obsessed with light becoming the second Kira her determination though some may say possibly ill placed receiving the Shinig- Shinigami eyes not once but twice and then yeah. there's there's something to be said about 
Misa herself having two Shinigami give their lifespan to her. And then meanwhile, you've got Ryuk in the corner laughing at light pretty much the whole series. <laughs> you know, so I there's know. something to say about Misa. Um, there's something I'd like to read and, and get your opinion on. So forgive me, everybody, for talking so much, but... Uh, let me build this up. There's a, a YouTube channel by the name of The Amagi, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. They did a, a video about the life of Misa. There's a user by the name of Zephyr who wrote a comment that sent agreements and disagreements flying all over the place. And so I want to read this real quick, and I quote, Misa is the only Kira who deserves better. She fell in love with Light, and her love was so loyal. Since she had the Shinigami eyes, she could have totally killed Light, not to mention her Shinigami were loyal to her. But look what happens to her. She gets played and used by Light, who had no feelings for her. She tried her best to satisfy Light, but she couldn't. In the end, after Light's death, she went through depression and then she committed, you know, she unalived herself. I can't say YouTube frowns upon, upon, upon that word. Um, and then he goes on to say, man, she deserved better. So whether you uh, agree with this person's statements or disagree, it definitely does paint a picture of how awesomely written Misa's story was from you know, a storytelling standpoint. Do you think Misa deserved better? Would you have told her story any differently? I mean, were you intrigued by it as a whole as well? I mean, any, any thoughts uh, on that? I remember reading it and, and being very angry at some of her choices. Mm -hmm. um, like I was, I felt like as like a strong woman and telling, right. telling these kinds of stories, I felt like I would, I, I did want more for her. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I think she is so pure of heart um, and she was okay with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, I, yeah. I don't think that she felt like she was betraying. I think if she, if she didn't lead with her heart, her story could be a little bit murkier, but because she was so pure and she had people to back her right? Uh, that like her story ended. I mean, it's controversial the way it ended, but it is. her story ended in kind of this in in kind of an only way I feel like it could for her given given how pure and loyal she was yeah it's a bit like Romeo and Juliet almost it is know? it is yeah and people are, they both loved each other <laughs> yeah exactly yeah light <laughs> light light couldn't care less <laughs> but, yeah, it's just like, yeah. but just the, tra yeah. the tragedy of mm -hmm. you know love and how strong yeah. that emotion and she definitely, she went through a lot of loss, loss of her parents, so she, yeah. stri striving yeah. to get somebody's attention that clearly didn't want her. And maybe that almost fueled it even more because she, because he really didn't care. And she was just so driven to satisfy him and please him in, in every way possible to do everything for him. And, and I mean, it was for I her too, because I know, I know a lot of, a lot of us, you, you mentioned even like about, you know, being a woman, a strong woman, but even as a man, there was plenty of us that were sitting there going, Misa, what is going on? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Into you. <laughs> like you gotta give it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but I think it, it brought everything together as a whole. And it's always the question too, uh, you and I were talking off air about it. Like, like, did she unalive herself? It's so weird that we have to use that word, but like, I didn't know got, you couldn't say the other word. They, so. I mean, you can, but they, they frown upon the use of the okay. word. So I don't know exactly. It, it does certain things with algorithms and this and that. So we try to okay, avoid, but. avoid saying it, but but uh, some people say like, did she? It was. It seems like it was just implied. Others are saying maybe she didn't. But in the manga, she definitely does. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the route that they went, in my opinion, with the actual anime. They didn't show it, but it was implied that that's what was going yeah. to be happening. And once again, I think uh, sometimes, whether it be anime or anything, sometimes those moments where it's implied instead of showing it on screen all, also almost makes it a little bit more heartfelt too because- yeah. You don't get to see anymore. You just know, like, that's what happened and it's over. Like, you, yeah. you we're not going to experience any more Misa. And to me, it, it speaks once again to uh, such a job well done with the writing. And not only Misa, but I think Death Note as a whole. And maybe I'm biased because I'm just such a big fan of the anime. But I swear, I, I really do think it's it's one of the... The, the best, like, it's one of the truly just really well written animes and a very intriguing story that pulls you in each episode as it furthers. And I know it's been a decent amount of time now, but even with that passing of time, is there 
uh, any, any standout moments in the series as a whole that pop into your mind when you think of Death Note? And that, that could be even if it's a moment where you were recording something or if it's an actual scene from the series itself, just something that maybe stands out to you when you think of Death Note. Well, when we were just chatting earlier about when Light finds out that she's the second Kira. Yeah. Like that scene to me was really pivotal. Yeah. Um, it was powerful. Mm-hmm. And I just remember, like, I remember reading that and then I remember going in and recording it. So I loved that scene. There was a scene also too, and I can't, it's been so long, but there was a scene where I feel like we were at a, at the diner and I might've like, I was eating French fries or like something with a milkshake. I don't know. It's, it's coming to me too. It's I don't com- know. And I, I can't remember yeah. if I fit in the diner or I like threw something at him or <laughs> I was like, but anytime, honestly, anytime that Misa could just have a fit. I was there for it. <laughs> so those are really my favorite moments. And then of course I got to sing a little song and. Yes. You know. I bet that that always warms your heart being a singer, yeah. right? You get those yeah. moments where you get oh to God, sing I something. Get to <laughs> I love it. I love it. Such a, such a great anime, such a, well written written character i love it like i like i mentioned before some people find her annoying but i feel like it, whether you find her annoying or not it 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 it's everything she's also like you said a word that i like that you use is she's powerful yeah her her determination is definitely ill placed because she's she's focused on light and and only light really but just imagine the things that she could have done on her own if she was not focused on light and that's that opens up a whole other book of you know she's she's out here killing people though still so like you know oh, okay. is it is it is it good to even say what she could have done but the point is if she wasn't so focused on light she was actually very powerful she had the shinigami eyes two shinigami giving up their lives for her there's definitely mm-hmm. something to be said as she's a pop for me so she's exactly all of that even outside of that she's a celebrity and everything so it's a it's such a, a well written story and then you mix in all of her tragedies and then and then how did it end it ended in tragedy so it's like that character was just her story was always going to be tragedy almost no matter what so and I think that's I think that's what I meant by like I didn't really see another way right you know I right. think it almost like it was consistent <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether story. you liked it or not whether it was definitely liked consistent not, yeah whether you liked it or not you know yeah. yeah, definitely. Well, I like I said, I love Death Note. I love all the character portrayals so that you and all your castmates did. You guys did such a phenomenal job with with uh, with portraying the characters in such a well written story. I know it. Uh, it's very much so the story of Misa is done, and I wish it wasn't because I would just love to see you, br- you know, bring the role back and do something. I wish I wish they did. I I had Drummond on before you as well, and we talked about that and if he would ever come back or do something. But of course, you know, Ryuk could see the light of day again if they did do something where it seems like Misa's story is is over unless it was more of a uh, like a prequel or some of some okay. sort uh but I, I and i do believe there's a couple different ways that we could do it but we'll save that for another time that's just me <laughs> being a fan <laughs> but uh with the duffer brothers i don't know if you heard about this the duffer brothers of stranger things uh fame they're looking to bring their version of death note to to netflix a live action uh is this something that you plan on tuning into Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> yes, I love, I love Stranger Things. Um, yeah, me too. And you know, call my agent, guys. <laughs> yes, right? It's so funny because I, I believe I, I, me and Drummond talked about that too. I don't remember if I brought it up or if, or if he brought up the Duffer Brothers. I believe he might have brought it up at first, which, yeah. which, uh, which in, influenced me to bring it up to you. And uh, we were talking about that. He said the same thing. If they need a voice for Ryu, you know who to call. Listen, listen. <laughs> managers on my IMDb, agents on my IMDb, yes. available. Right now. <laughs> I would, I would love to see that. That would just fulfill the fan I would in me love for to sure. See, I mean, clearly their minds are so creative right right and just like sky's the limit with them yeah i would love to see their interpretation of it yeah definitely 
Yeah, yeah me too. I, I can't wait for that. I have no idea when that's happening. It's been in talks for quite a while, but I'm sure that they're working hard on it. Um, amazing job with Misa. I'm such a huge fan of Death Note, and I'm such a huge fan of all of you guys and everything that you guys were doing. Uh, but before we before we uh, get ready to wrap up and whatnot, I do want to ask you a couple more recent questions about things that you're working on. So I know that you are another thing that I'm a huge fan of. So forgive me if I if I fan out a little bit, but you are Amy Rose and variations of Amy. Amy Rose, if anybody has watched Sonic Prime, the eight episodes, I believe it's eight, that are out right now. Um, what is that experience like being Amy in Sonic, in Sonic Prime? Oh, I was like, so ecstatic. To play. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm Amy Rose. Like, I remember watching Sonic when I was younger and like playing Sega. I didn't do much of it, but I did it. And I loved Sonic the Hedgehog so much. And Funnily enough, I did like a little scene in the feature of Sonic, the first movie. The yes, lineup. I remember seeing you. Yeah, it was just a small scene, and then I it was, was so the bar. Terrible. It was the bar scene, right? It was Wasn't the bar it? Scene. Yeah, yeah, the bar yeah. scene. Yeah, and uh, and then I got this part, and and what's so fun about it is how many different Amy's I get to play. Yes. So. And that's what, that's what I was going to elaborate on. I'm so sorry to cut you off. That's what I was going to elaborate on. Like, how is it like you were playing one character, but you're playing different variations of that character. Spoiler, spoiler alert. If anybody hasn't, hasn't watched the first eight episodes. It's been out for a while, guys. So, yes, yeah, it's been, I think it's long enough. We could talk about at least the first eight, but, uh, and I say that because there's going to be more, more coming, but, uh, how is it playing, you know, one character that actually has variations of her as opposed to just, you know, singular. I mean, for me, it's an actor's dream. Right, like I would think to, so. You get to know who Amy is to the core and like keep that there. And then you kind of build your little spider web and like find different, different, um, yeah, different variations of right, her, different yeah. sides of her personalities, tone, tonality. And, mm-hmm. and so I was just like, I, I got to have, multiple personalities. Yeah, basically such a, such a great, such a great show. I told, I told Drummond this same thing when I first watched it, I've always been a giant, a giant Sonic fan. And, and like I've said before to, to you before, and then I've mentioned a few times on the show, I have, I have another show that focuses on gaming and film and cosplay. So I'm a big fan of all of these things. I, I've been a nerd since, a, since a kid, like my parents got me into gaming and it just took off from there. And uh, I've been a huge Sonic fan. And when I first watched Sonic Prime, I just remember talking to some of my friends and, and saying like, this just has no business being this good. Like, it's just oh. so good. Like everything about it, everybody, the, the animation, the writing, the acting, the voice acting, like everybody just to come together to bring such a solid project together. It's definitely, definitely pleasing the fans. And there's, there's eight episodes out now but if I'm correct, I don't remember exactly what Brian Drummond said. And, I, and from my own research, is there going to be like 22 this season? Is, is, that, is that the number? I don't know what you can and can't say. So we'll try to tread lightly, but I'm definitely going to try to pull it out of you. So is it 22? So, uh, well, it, close, yes. <laughs> hot, cold, hot, cold. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the vicinity, at least, I think, maybe. That makes me so happy because we we obviously want anyone to tune in and, and enjoy the show, but, but for the, for the diehard fans to have your approval is like, it means the world. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. You guys are doing a solid job, especially as a fan since, since a young and with the games and everything and growing up into it, into Sonic Adventure, all the fans will know that the gamers will know into Sonic Adventure when we first saw Amy Rose and everything from seeing that first rendition of Amy to seeing you portray her as Sonic Prime. I just want to give you your kudos and your props because you're definitely as a hardcore gamer and a fan, you're doing a phenomenal job. And I'm just so ecstatic to see it all come to light in the way that it, that it is i know that brian drummond previous guest on the show is also a part of sonic prime did you guys get to uh voice anything together in the same rooms or has everything been uh sep- done separately everything's been separate unfortunately oh, which, unfortunate, which yeah. is so tough especially when you're piecing together i mean there's so much that happens in in that show that like it, it would have been really helpful to like feed off right. of one another um, and feed off of one another's energy. But, but James, our director, um, 
was just amazing in, in helping us kind of visualize what was right. going on without actually hearing the other actors. But right. I've been, pardon me, working with Brian since I was 14. So That's crazy, I've been working I know. with all of these people since mm-hmm. I was 13, 14. So so I can't wait to actually get back into the studio with them. Definitely, definitely. Brian said something very similar as well. Um, so before we do get out of here, I want to ask you a, a couple fun questions. Just a couple like rapid fire questions. This is not one of them, but uh, it, it, any chance that you could tell us the release date for Sonic Prime's future episodes? No, I'm just kidding. I know you can't. I don't want to get you in any trouble. <laughs> but, but I had to try. I had to try and, and, and vibe off your energy real quick. So <laughs> I, uh, I, always, I always like to ask any actors or actresses who do voice acting for uh, various genres. Um, yeah. what, what would you say are the differences between like acting in roles such as Sonic Prime uh, in comparison to like an anime role, such as like dubbing for Death Note? Are, are there any uh, differences that, 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 oh, that stand huge out? Differences. Huge differences. First of all, when you're dubbing, you're dubbing it to um, uh, fit the mouth flaps. Um, so there's not a ton of creativity there. There's not a ton of bandwidth. You have to kind of know what you're doing, know how to get that point across and emotion across in a certain time frame. Um, with something we call like prelay, like Sonic or you know any of the other shows, prelay animation that I've done. There's there's usually the, there's a storyboard when you start, and then they animate to you afterwards. So it's um a little more loose um so yeah that would be the biggest interesting the biggest. interesting um whether it be in the anime realm or in any other you know type of genre of voice acting is there any character that you have always been intrigued by or maybe that you saw and were intrigued by and you thought to yourself man i would have loved to portray that character ooh um that's a tough one. Honestly, when I read Nisa, I mean, thank, I'm thanking my lucky stars I got to portray her, but she was one where I was like, ooh, you're a little complicated. Yeah. You know, you're, you're definitely layered, and I know that you're pure and fun, but you're also manic. And um, so I was, I was excited to play her. Um, I am... Yeah, there's, I, I mean, I can't think of any off the top of my no, head. No, no worries. We'll take Misa as an answer always. <laughs> I love her. Yeah, definitely. Uh, do you personally have a top list of your favorite projects that you've been attached to? Could be one, two, three, five, whatever it I may mean, be. I um, mean, My Little Pony was an epic journey. Mm-hmm. Um, like 10 years of working on uh, that, right? Yeah, and cons and so many songs and um yeah it was just a, a beautiful show to be a part of also um the littlest pet shop i loved i voiced a few people on that few characters on that the biscuit twins are like forever in my heart um what else my fair madeline was like one of my first movies i ever did and I got, I I just thought, I was like, this is, this is not real life. I was like, I can't be paid to sing, to skip school. Yeah, I bet. (laughs) Say a little French girl Mm -hmm. who I grew up, like reading the books. It was just like a dream come true. I bet. So those are the standout ones for me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Shannon, I want to thank you so much for for chatting with us with the with the with the time that we've had here. Uh, why don't you go ahead and let people know where they can find you, how they can follow you, uh, anything that you want to say or anything that you want to tell people to look out for. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. You can follow me. I don't have Twitter anymore. I, I think I got hacked or locked out or something, but I'm okay <laughs> with that. So you can follow me on Instagram at Shannon C. Kent. Um, and you can come find me. I'm going to a lot of anime conventions this year, but more specifically the one in Vegas. April yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. I've never been to Vegas. Oh, we're going to have such a good time. We are going to have such a good time. And I'm, so I'm going to... 
I'm going to be hosting uh, the, uh, hopefully I'm not, I'm not breaking any contractual uh, agreements right now. I don't, I don't know if we've announced it yet, but uh, I'm going to say it anyway. That's what editing's for. I'll be hosting the uh, Anime Las Vegas panel with the Death Note cast April 22nd and 23rd in Las Vegas at the Expo. And so you guys better go get your tickets right now so you can be there because we are going to have a blast talking to the entire cast of Death Note. I cannot, I cannot wait to meet you in person, Shannon, and talk with you more uh, in, in Vegas. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round of applause for Shannon Chan Kent. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you, good sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this episode is brought to you by... Anime Las Vegas, an amazing anime convention full of many things, anime, cosplay, and so much more coming this April 22nd and 23rd at the Expo at the World Market Center. Over 400 vendors for you to pick up all of your anime goodies from, all the goodies that you can, well over 40 guests with the likes of a huge Naruto cast, Johnny Young Bosch, Troy Baker, Lex Lang, just to name a few, the cast of Death Note, the biggest Bleach cast ever assembled in one place, a Chainsaw Man cast reunion, and I could go on and on, and that's not even covering the panels. Like, come on, it's not even covering the panels, man. There's gonna be a uh, anime slam, which is professional wrestling, an anime themed car display, the Dreamland Maid Cafe, and believe me, I'm barely scratching the surface. There's so much more, man. Tickets are on sale right now at AnimeLasVegas.com and they're only $45 for the entire weekend. What more do you need? You know what I mean? What more do you need, right? Well, maybe you need the after party details and that is on Saturday night April 22nd at the Worldview rooftop at the same place that the convention is being held so you don't need to go anywhere else it's at the World Market Center <laughs> you can go across the street real quick and get some food if you don't want any of the food that's there or the food trucks or anything that's going to be there and then you come back you take a little bit of time and then boom hit the after party at the same place that you were already at and it's hosted by me myself yours truly alongside my co-host for it Mackenzie Fox and we're going to have karaoke uh we're gonna have a dj drinks and it is 18 plus so make sure you bring an id dancing and live music from the emo pop tribute band 30 fallouts to romance and so much more tickets for that are only 20 dollars, and they are also available at anime las vegas so go out there and get them and come say hi to me hopefully in a miss makima cosplay or misa amane ricky Please scoot me on out of here. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, man. Uh, you know we usually do the, uh, the the anime talks art showcase after this segment. I'm gonna put my jacket back on. I'm getting a little getting a little cold in here. Um, we usually do the art showcase segment after this, but um, apparently Ricky said we're gonna switch it up. We're switching it up, man. Yep. It gets spicy in here, man. We're gonna do a little something different. He he sent it to me. I haven't watched it yet, but he was telling me uh he chopped up this video, uh, this light yagami not simping for Misa for six minutes straight. Yeah, I just heard, you know, I heard you were simping for somebody, so you know what? But, <laughs> okay, let's no, let's uh, let's tone it down a little bit here. Okay, let's tone it down. Uh but apparently we're not gonna watch the entire six minutes because I mean who, who wants to sit through us reacting for six minutes? Is it two? Okay, two minutes. Uh, but he did send me the YouTube channel so I could read some of the comments because he said some of the uh, some of the comments were uh, were pretty funny too. So we'll see if we we get to any of the comments. But it's by Ryuk's Apple on YouTube, and uh, let's have some fun and let's react to Light Yagami not simping for Misa for two two minutes and forty four seconds straight. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how true this is. <gasps> Dramatic hug. It's so true. It's like that anime. Oh my god! <laughs> it's so true, dude. Oh my god! Ryu can rem just watching every moment. I understand. I can't be your boyfriend, but I can act like it. Aren't you sweet? <laughs> she really thought. <laughs> Finessed again. Damn it. 
Damn it! It's setback after setback, and I've only just arrived in the U.S., so I'm not in any position to start giving orders to the American police. <sighs> At this rate, the notebook's gonna be... Light, is everything okay? Is something wrong? You look kind of... Misa, just <gasps> shut up and do what I told you, all right? <laughs> same, Misa, same. <laughs> sorry, but I just couldn't wait for two weeks, like you said. Actually, I was just on my way to your house when I spotted you. <laughs> this is the first time in my life oh. that I've been provoked yeah. to hit a woman. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Let's hope they have it. Light, there you are. When you put it into context like this, it really shows how much of an asshole Light was. Misa, you idiot. You did this for what? Why not? <laughs> Why? Why not? Why, though? <laughs> Why, though? Yeah, I remember this. I am. All she's trying to do is give her man a drink. In consideration, I realized who I was. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> so light. I guess this means I was helpful to you again, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this shit he got me in the background. Just like creepily watching her in her panties, dude. You took advantage of me? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Damn, does she ever stop talking? <laughs> I really can't get rid of her, huh? This is the second time I've been provoked to hit a woman, the text said. This is an outrage. Uh, taking advantage of this situation. Oh yeah, is L just grabs her ass, dude. <laughs> Light doesn't oh, care. Yeah, yeah dude You're doesn't so give funny. a damn, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, with L. Oh, I know what this is. I remember when I watched this for the first time. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like, 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 uh. You're still wet. <laughs> Misa would have loved that to be her, like rubbing him down. Oh man, that is hilarious, bro. Yeah, you're right, Ricky. That was that was funny as shit. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. I mean, let's just go. Let's go through a couple of the comments real quick. Um, yeah, Ryuk and Rem were literally the most third wheeled characters I've ever seen. That's true. This is true. Misa, extremely beautiful. Two literal gods loved her so much they died for her. Even L was crushing for her for a moment there. Extremely dedicated and loyal. Meanwhile, light. Ew. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true, man. And then you got a couple of people talking about quoting. This is the first time in my life I was provoked to hit a woman. That shit is hilarious. But hey, hey, Anime Talks does not condone hitting women. All right, let's just let's put that out there right now. <laughs> It's so funny. I, I'm going to have to screenshot this one. We got to throw this one up on the screen so people can get it. Misa, could you please make me your girlfriend? Light. Girlfriend? And then Ryuk and Rem, they have the, uh, like the eyes emoji with the tongue sticking out and popcorn next to it. You know what I mean? Like they're constantly just watching this drama unfold, dude. So funny, man. Yeah, this is, this is hilarious, dude. I really, uh, that, was, that was funny as hell, man. I hope everybody uh, laughed along with us, dude. Um, we are going to get ready to get out of here, man. Ricky, that was phenomenal, dude. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, nice clap for Ricky over there. Um, before we get out of here, though, uh, let us know what you're watching. You know, if you're watching any animes right now or if you're revisiting any animes, all this uh, Death Note talk that we've had on the show lately. Um, are you revisiting Death Note? I've been wanting to do it, but like I said, I'm, I'm watching so many things right now. I'm watching so many different things. Too long for me to even list. So let us know what it is that you're watching, whether it be anime or even maybe it's outside the realm of anime. Maybe you're watching something else. Hey, I'm a film buff. I, I like watching movies. I'm, I'm a big film guy. Ricky's a big film guy. We watch a lot of different stuff. Uh, we, you know, we work on our own film stuff all the time. So we, I mean, we love, we love all that kind of thing. So whether it be horror or comedy or whatever it may be, superhero stuff, if it's just something that maybe you're watching that's outside of the anime realm you just want to share with everybody and just get a conversation started go ahead and write it down in the comments and we can talk about it we'll get over there we'll type it oh my god i love this too wow space bar that's a space bar but um for everybody tuning in thank you for tuning in i have been chazzy your host and if you're looking for me you can find me on instagram at ig hates chazzy and make sure that you oh by the way i forgot to tell you if you if you follow me on any of my other ventures, such as the Side Project Podcast, where we talk about gaming, film, and cosplay, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Make sure you're following Anime Fire Official on YouTube right now, as well as on Instagram. But if you are watching it on YouTube right here, right now, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can continue to get 
live action anime like like the Digimon Digimon episode one that's out right now the next Shaman King is coming it is on the way make sure you continue getting talk shows like this countdown shows maybe some game shows and everything else that we put out on anime fire official so make sure you subscribe so you can continue getting those things and make sure that you share with a friend because we are putting the fire in anime thank you Ricky <laughs> <laughs>